Hello, everybody, and welcome to an episode of Watching Paint Dry with Zeb. Unfortunately, this is going to be about how to use software, and, well, we all know how interesting that can be. What I'm doing is giving a quick overview of the configuration utility for the new Zeb's Board's TAU board system. Basically, I've taken all of your outputs and jammed them into strings of addressable LED type outputs, meaning that your shaker motor now runs on the same protocol that your serial side strips and your matrix run on. In order to do that, unfortunately, I had to create a utility in order to be able to program it because the existing config tool online just doesn't handle that sort of output control. And I was not able to get any response to my inquiries about changing that. To that end, now you have a software utility that can be downloaded, run locally on your computer, and you have complete control over. Basically, it's broken down into five parts, six if you include the dashboard that you're looking at right at the moment. This is your main screen where you would start from and closing the individual windows will bring you back to this dashboard. Everything runs off of open source Office Suite called LibreOffice. It's easily available. It's not that complicated, not that far away from Excel. And to be honest, outside of making any modifications to the software package itself, there's really no need for anybody to worry about whether or not they're able to use Excel or Office. So we'll go on to the next screen. The first screen that we have is the configuration screen. It's a viewer more than an actual tool that you're going to use to do your editing in. This is just a simple, easy way for you to see what it is that you've already got configured, what you have set up, what outputs you're utilizing, and give you a, basically a sneak preview of what your end result is going to be. You can select the individual tables from the drop down menu. You can view whichever tables you'd like to view. And of course, the default table is a non existent table, but it gives you a brief description of what each of these values are that you're looking at. This is basically what you get to play with in order to be able to create your own effects, create your own outputs, make your cabinet your own. Once again, to change screens and to go back to the dashboard, all we do is we click the exit button and we're back. Next screen is your config editor. This is where you're actually going to do the magic for your traditional force feedback type output control. This is where you're going to get your control in for your start buttons and your launch buttons and your solenoids and your flippers and your motors and your toaster ovens and microwave ovens and hot dog steamers and popcorn makers and whatever else it is that you're connecting up for your force feedback. Much the same as the previous screen, everything's controlled selection-wise from the drop-down. Now I've put in everything I could get out of the online config tool, which basically gives you 1400 plus ROMs that are pre-configured for you. I can't make any guarantees that every configuration I've done up works seamlessly because I don't have every table in this list to test with. But for the most part, it is working and it's easily uh, troubleshot from the point of view of you will be able to see what the configuration is that you have. And if you compare it to the output log from DOF, you'd be able to identify any issues that you might possibly run into. So now we'll go on to the next screen. So the next screen is much the same as the last one we looked at, except this is dedicated to your actual serial addressable lighting outputs. In other words, your flasher, your strobes, your undercab, 
play field strips, your matrix, your speaker rings, whatever you want to use. You would once again select your ROM from the drop down list. You would retrieve the data and then you would be able to make whatever changes it is that you need to make. If you want to add speaker rings, you just add in your string here. Most of it's going to be generated externally for you, either using Terry Red's excellent Excel spreadsheet, which will run under LibreOffice, so you don't need the second piece of software to be able to utilize it. And you just copy and paste and drag and drop and put it into the appropriate boxes, and it'll be added to your database. Your database that you're going to have with the software package is your database behind the scenes and you'll be able to share it amongst yourselves whatever whatever you choose to do you can keep it private you can share it the sky's the limit once again to close out the window we're not going to save any changes because i didn't make any changes that i want to save and your next screen is the add new table screen this is just a basic screen that allows you to create a new entry in your database. You don't have to worry about an ID number. This is automatically generated for you by the software as you add tables. But basically, if somebody came, came up with a new table that wasn't already in your INI file, it doesn't exist in your database. If it doesn't exist in your database, then you need to create that entry for it. It's a pretty straightforward procedure. You can enter in your table name. You're going to put in the make year if you want to use that sort of identifier. And even the emulator that it runs under, Visual Pinball or Future Pinball or Pinball FX3 or whatever. And the name of the ROM that you're going to want it identified as in your INI file, which is the name of the ROM that is in the table script that it's looking for to load all this information. After that, you're just going to click Save. You've created a new entry point for your database so that you can go back to your previous screens and create your configurations. And finally, we have where the screen where all the magic actually happens, and that is the file generation screen. This one's pretty straightforward. You have a series of steps here to generate your config file that you're going to drag and drop into your direct output folder. You have an area for generating your cabinet config file, which honestly, if you're only ever going to use what you initially install in the system for lighting, you'll only ever have to create that once. If you decided down the road you wanted to add to it, for example, if you had serial side strips and the matrix, and then you wanted to add speakers, well, down here you'd put in your speakers. You'd put in how many LEDs that your speaker rings have that you want to use. You'd pick the direction that they're running, and then you'd just gener regenerate your cabinet XML file and overwrite the one that you already have in your direct output folder. It's as simple as that. No more complicated math or having to figure out directions. I've basically tried to strip it down to be as easily used as possible. And that's it, guys. That's basically what's involved in the software. Now, I'm going to release this as open source. Hopefully somebody that's much smarter than I, that has more experience with using these kind of office suites, is able to do something more with it, make it better, more functional for you, easier. But this is enough to get it up and running. It's not as complicated as it looks, and I'm going to do a series of individual videos on how to use each of these screens and go in a little more in depth as to how all of this works. I wanted everybody to be able to see what's involved in using the new board before they make purchases of the new board. It is going to be as easy as using the online config tool, 
but you have more control over your individual cabinet by using this rather than that. Doesn't mean that you don't need the online config tool anymore. I found it very helpful to be able to download uh, configuration files from the existing online tool in order to use as a starting off and reference point to be able to generate my own configurations for my own system here. Sorry if this was boring. Hopefully I'll get a little bit more used to speaking to a computer screen with no feedback whatsoever, but at this point in time, I can only do what I can do because this isn't something I'm usually used to or actually very comfortable with. Anyways, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. And uh, I hope this generates a little bit of interest in this new board system that I've developed. Thanks again.